Is that you up here? I think Is that Ethan? Yes. Take a picture of me. I am. Here we go! Aloha. Hey, ho. Bye bye. And you follow it. Say bye bye first. Say that. Bye bye. Okay. Fluff, fluff, fluff. I'm going to go to the gym. Ethan was born at eight pounds, eight ounces at 8.30. <laughs> and so he was eight and a half at eight and a half. <laughs> Ethan was just incredible from the very beginning. He just had uh, such a, a zest for life. As a toddler, he would wake up from his nap and sit in his bed. And instead of screaming for me to come get him, <laughs> I'd have the monitor in the room and I'd hear him singing to himself. <laughs> and he would do this bop bop boop ba doo bop ba doo. <laughs> he didn't ask questions with Ethan. <laughs> it just he just took it at face value and said okay. <laughs> he was just the most affectionate little guy. If I were sitting down, he would be sitting right next to me. He'd come over and say, I've got something for you. <laughs> and he did that probably a million times over the course of his life. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ethan. Happy birthday to you. All right. Blow off the candles. Blow real hard. Oh, good. Not every day your brother turns four, is it? Nope. <laughs> Show me how many fingers is four. Nice job. Wow. You're sure getting old. You know, moms are so dialed into their kids. She, she knew years, in fact, before we got the formal diagnosis that there was something that just wasn't quite right. We kept seeing small things, but we didn't put them all together. We just thought it was ADHD or ADD. Really, until he had the CT scan, we, we didn't know anything was really seriously wrong. He was manifesting some clumsiness and abnormal behavior at the time, and so one of the suggestions that I had was that he get some imaging, CT, MRI, and so forth, and get to see one of our pediatric neurologists. There was something abnormal accumulating in the brain and that led to further testing. It's on the X chromosome. It's a hereditary disease and so it's uh, passed to young boys at birth. They develop at a normal rate. Uh, they just appear completely 100 percent perfect uh, until they reach the ages of six to nine, ten years old. And what's, uh, what's really tragic is it's almost uh, always misdiagnosed as attention deficit disorder. At first, the boys have a, a little bit of trouble focusing. And then they have a little bit of trouble verbalizing. And then they start to lose their balance. And then they lose the ability to speak. And then they lose their vision. We were pretty much in shock. We just, we were barely able to function on a day-to-day -day basis. And my sister Karen um, contacted Make-A-Wish and she wanted Ethan to have a wish. She knew how important skateboarding was to, to Ethan. He wanted to get out there. He wanted to be at the skate park constantly. Seeing a young kid out there skateboarding and seeing the older kids cheering him on and you know, 
know, hey, good job, little guy. <laughs> little dude. <laughs> little dude. Ethan would eat that up. Yeah, even after Ethan started struggling with his balance, he would go out to the skate parks and, you know, obviously something was amiss. And he would still be so encouraged by these older guys. And, you know, they could see that he was struggling. And he would try even harder after getting all of the words of encouragement from them. They've just all been so nice, so supportive, so encouraging. Um, and I think it's uh, there's just something unique about the sport that pulls these kids together. So we got a call from the uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation. They wanted to know if we could do something for this kid that was really sick. The next thing they said was, can you do something for, for him next week? He's really sick. Everyone we reached out to about Ethan's Wish wanted to participate, which was the most amazing thing because we really had only a week to put it together. We actually led Ethan down the back way behind the skate park because it was a surprise event. He had no idea what was going on. I saw the community that I've known for so long, the skate community, come together in a way that I had not seen them come together before. Today we're at the Bellevue Skate Park and they were more than happy to make anything happen for us. There are many local skaters here in this area who were overjoyed to come and help Ethan feel excited about his passion for skateboarding. It uh, meant the world to him, and through that event, we became good friends with a lot of people, and we've been drawn even more into the skateboarding scene, far more than I think we would have ever <laughs> expected to. What do you like about skateboarding? It just is fun. The only real cure for this particular disorder, adrenal leukodystrophy, is a bone marrow transplant. Uh, that will take place in a couple of weeks' time after he completes his chemotherapy regimen. And we're just praying and, and hoping for the best that he will have a good outcome and that those new cells will help produce the protein that his body is lacking and stop the course of this progressive disease. We decided to go forward with a stem cell transplant, even knowing it was a, a long shot and uh, unfortunately that proved to be the case. He, he fought a, a tremendous battle. He was 10 years old. He passed in, on May 11th, 2011, and his birthday is um, July 22nd, and he would have been 11 at that time. It's just to have families go through that, knowing that you can actually stop it if you simply knew that they had the disease. That's where we decided, you know, when we lost Ethan, he deserved more than that, that, that we, we could do something to, uh, <laughs> to do some good. You know one thing? What? I really rock. And what are you good at? Skateboarding. One, two, three, four! Yeah. I think Nancy and I both feel the same way, that this is something Ethan would really be proud of us for. And uh, I think that's maybe what drives us. We do not want another family to have to go through what we have gone through. All boys that are inflicted with this, uh, this disease, uh, unfortunately don't learn about it until it's too late. So that's where we felt that this newborn screening was really what we wanted to build our foundation around because it will save boys' lives. We always knew that if this was being done in Ethan's memory, that somehow, some way, it was gonna take on a, a life of its own, bigger than anything we had ever envisioned. And although year one was on a somewhat modest scale, it was still a great event. It was all about Skate for the Cure. And at that event, at that second event, is when we decided, hey, you know what? Big things are possible here. We wanna make sure that what we're doing in his memory 
is going to be worth his memory. Let's make Ethan's wish, which was I want every skateboard on earth to know that I rock. Let's make it come true. Every skateboard on earth is gonna know that Ethan rock. In order to get someone's attention sometimes you gotta bring in a giant exclamation point that's, you know, 10 stories tall. Is there a major young skateboarding star now? The guys who would be skating the ramp, the guys who would probably be in the Olympics, uh, I'd say on the US, is a guy like uh, Mitchie Brusco. It all started out with a conversation we had at the last event. Now, everyone knows he's a kid who did a 1080 on the mega ramp. He's from our area. You know, we've known this kid for a long time. Joe came to me and basically said, hey, can you help us? And I, I told him yes. Uh, and, and they were skeptical, I think. I don't know how it came up in conversation, but we were like, let's do a mega ramp next year. Five do minutes, and basically what came from it is, is I said, I, I know I'm young, and this is probably a little weird, but you, if I'm gonna help, like you have to let me help. I, I want to come to Washington. I want to be in a board meeting, and I want to, I want to be a part of the staff. Uh, like I, I want my input to be heard. To, to to hear Ethan talk about the fact that Mitchie Brusco was at, you know, my my event. You, you just words will never describe the impression you left with him. And so to have you carry through and be at the 2013 event, mm -hmm. and to step up and. Obviously, we're taking this to a whole new level. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's fair to say we couldn't do it without someone like you. And so, uh, thank you. I get overshadowed a lot in, in bigger events just because of my age, but you guys are taking me seriously. And I have some good input, and, I, and I'm really happy to be a part of something like this. The real estate on the ramp is actually pretty important on where stickers can go. Um, stickers can't just be everywhere you guys can put them. Eight, and then... Plus three. Plus... You yeah. should do plus two for to make it ten. Okay. Uh, I think that'd be good. The way we brand this is it's the Easy Rocks Skate for the Cure. Mm -hmm. 20 year anniversary celebration of the Bellevue Skate Park. We had the typical uh, stereotype of the, the skateboarding scene and the types of kids that skateboarders were. And boy, I tell you, we couldn't have been more wrong. It was just eye-opening for us to just see that these are uh, these are great kids. A bunch of skate parks have, have helped me build my career, including the city of Bellevue Skate Park. I've spent a lot of hours in that place, and uh, it's allowed me to, to travel all over the world with skateboarding. Professional skateboarders have come out of Bellevue and a lot of them worked at Bellevue, skateboarded at Bellevue, went to skate camps at Bellevue. They were open when you couldn't go anywhere else to skate, and I, I would run into David Gravett there all the time. He was like three when I was skating with him there. He couldn't even climb up the ramp, so he'd do a trick, and I would plan to be there so I could like hand my board down, and he'd run up and grab a hold of the trucks, and I'd pull him up, and then he'd take off again on his next tricks. Those dreams came from places like the Bellevue Skate Park and, and guys like David Gravett and Sky Siljig. I mean, those were all like pivotal times in my, in my skateboarding career. The fact that Bellevue Skate Park has been around for 20 years is incredible by itself. But for me, getting to become what I dreamt about becoming, being there as a 10 or 11 year old, it was the perfect classroom for me. And I'm just thankful that it was there and it's still there today. Everyone working at the park right now used to be one of these old guys skating. And then they were volunteers, and then they were staff, and now they're running skate camps. So. Alright, I want you guys to give each other a round of applause for such a solid yeah. time. Yeah. Um, I am the lead camp instructor, manager, uh, pretty much all ends of things, do anything and everything for the skate park. I've been skating at the Bellevue Indoor for about 18 years, I would say, and I've been working there for 10. Been skating here every day since I was a little kid, pretty much grew up here. Like, I've probably taught maybe 5,000 kids, maybe more, in the course of the years I've worked here and you know how many lives I've changed like whether I know it or not that's pretty incredible and it's something I can't ever wrap my head around that I've changed a lot of kids lives. We've come too far that this thing isn't going to happen. Doesn't mean that there's still some sleepless nights where we're wondering about uh, how this whole thing's going to fall together but uh, you get this many good people, passionate people that are doing it for the right reasons, it, it can't help but uh, 
go off without success. We wanted to build the ramp ourselves. It was going to be awesome. We're going to have a, a mega ramp here in Bellevue forever. You know, for just an event, it just seemed impractical. It, just, it got a little overwhelming. But now, you know, we're going to the guys who've already done it before. These guys have built this ramp. People have skated this ramp. Now, our team at uh, California Ramp Works has been the ones that have been innovating these kind of structures. And it's gotten light years ahead of where it was at. We now do everything, at least the big structures, are on a complete scaff base. So we actually have another company come in. They build a scaffolding structure to our specifications. And we have custom pieces that we've built that just snap into that scaffolding. What's really cool about this event, and uh, Mitchie, Joe, and I have all talked about this, is um, we're going to really open up the invites for this one. It's just going to be fun for everybody. Our old buddy Quincy Quigg, everybody's favorite skateboard artist. He's volunteering his time uh, and to do the flyer. I've seen the draft, man. It is so awesome. Oh, well, when Joe approached me about doing the big festival, you know, and uh, he wanted it for the kids and for the people as well. So it's for a good cause. And I told him, you know, I'll do the artwork. And I had a picture in my head of the the super mega gnarly big huge X Games Coca-Cola ramp <laughs> and uh, that's what I wanted to do is uh, do like a trap door and all this ridiculous stuff going on a 20 foot tombstone vert wall with the you know and kids are having fun eating popcorn in the grandstand there and uh, I just wanted it to be fun. Uh, the other company we just linked up with is uh, the School of Rock. Greenwood, Naked City, Soccer, what's that? That's why I kind of approached Joe, so we could, you know, we could be a bigger part of the community, particularly because we're both serving the same demographic of kids in a lot of ways. Like, a lot of our kids, when they're done with the rehearsal, will like go across the street and skate at the skate park. Our whole demographic of kids are those kids with like pink or green hair. Those fringe kids that are the ones that really find a home at School of Rock. And I feel like this, you know, skate parks are kind of the same way. There is a lot of opportunity to sort of join our two forces and put on a really amazing event for a really amazing cause. Next week, this time, there's going to be someone flying over a giant ramp standing right behind me. And right now, there's not even a ramp there. So you volunteer spreadsheet? Yes. Um, how are we looking on volunteer numbers? So, I mean, if it rains on us, which I don't think it's gonna, uh, the fact that just in the last six months with this project, the awareness of what ALD is has grown exponentially. That in itself is a success. I can't even tell you how many times if someone goes, what is ALD? What is ALD? I, I actually have no idea what ALD is. I didn't really know much about it. The, Ethan Zakes, you know, case was actually probably the first time I did hear about it. I think it's more common than people think, or there wouldn't be this movement behind it. We're doing this thing, whether we uh, want to turn back or not. You know, Nancy and I will oftentimes joke, you know, we're convinced that Ethan's up there, you know, just laughing his ass off at us right now, saying, this is what I would have wanted to see. You know, Ethan didn't do anything small. It was always about bigger, better, he always left a big impression, no matter what he did. And so uh, this, this event just has his name all over it. But it's looking a little rainy for the middle of next week. I'll be checking it every hour. I gotta stop doing that. It's like getting punched in the gut every five minutes. You never know. It feels great to be back home, and, it, and it's amazing to do an event so close to where I grew up. I mean, I'm almost more nervous for this event than any other event I've done.
it's awesome to see this in person. It's a really like big event. Like I never knew there's gonna be like so many people here. And it's like like School of Rock's here, Mini Megas here, and there's a contest in the street course. It's just a really good time to support ALD and, and the Zakes Foundation. I think Skate for the Cure is it's an amazing cause. For them to have something completely unique and as a exciting as this, um, it's a great cause and I think it's an easy way for people to get behind it and support it. Art of Oz! Yeah! See, I feel like I've always seen this in like, you know, like TV and video. internet and stuff. Hey, it's Trey Wood. I am 14 years old and I am a skateboarder. I think this is an awesome anniversary for Bellevue Skate Park. Just skate for the cure and Mega Ramps here, and then for Ethan too, so it's pretty cool. This whole contest was great. I got a text from Marshawn Lynch yesterday asking if I was here skating. Like everyone heard about it. We got awareness for ALD way out there. Easy Rock Skate for the Cure is a success and we'll come back next year. Back home, there's no public parks or anything like, you know. And then I come here and I, I see the mayor be like hyped on skateboarding and kind of accept the skateboard community because they've always been kind of like pushed away. And it's cool to see that the outside world that's outside of skateboarding is hyped on it too. The skating was amazing. Um, judging is always, you know, difficult. I'm I'm super happy with the way the results came. You know, I feel like the results kind of spoke for themselves. Guys that want money, stick around and get a handwritten check. Second place, 14 year old Trey Wood. $7,000. I'd just like to say it's a pleasure to be here to sponsor this event, uh, and even more of a pleasure to present a $10,000 first place check to John O'Schwan uh, for the Super Ramp competition. I came out here to skate for the cure originally. It's a super fun contest and everything. But um, I, the main reason I made the trip is to help with ALD, so I'm going to donate this to the Zakes Foundation. Wow. Hey, you put a cheer on my head, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys, for being You're a real man. Hey, let's hear it for John O'Swan. Hey! Literally. Are we good?